good morning St Luke's. I've read a couple of uh, interviews recently uh, with people who as a result of the instruction to stay home and to stay safe. Now even though the restrictions of lockdown are being eased a little bit, feel terrified about stepping out into new places, uh, into areas that are different to the familiar surroundings of their homes and gardens that they have become so used to and the feeling of safety within those areas in the last eight or nine weeks. And would you be unsurprised to hear that the same reluctance to step out uh, of the areas that we find safe, familiar and secure is the problem that the church has had uh, throughout its history too. Remember over the last couple of days we've seen uh, a process that Jesus initiated uh, at his ascension. He ascended so that his uh, followers could be equipped with power from on high in the giving of the Holy Spirit for the purpose that they might then become witnesses to Jesus throughout the world. And when that task had been accomplished, Jesus himself would return and complete uh, the bringing of his kingdom. And we've seen the spread of the early church throughout the initial chapters in the book of Acts. But that spread has been entirely based within the city of Jerusalem. They remained witnesses on home turf and familiar territory. What we've begun to see in Acts chapter 8, and we saw that firstly on Wednesday, was that it took a period of persecution to send the early Christians out into territories uh, that was unfamiliar ground for them. Wonderfully, we see that they continued to be faithful in their proclamation of Jesus, uh, but that some of these uh, unfamiliar uh, or uh, foreign territories that they would receive the message of Jesus was a great shock to the early Christians. And that was no more so uh, than when it came to the area of Samaria. There was a long-standing division between the Samaritans and the Jews. It's part of the controversy of Jesus's teaching in the parable of the Good Samaritan. It was unheard of uh, that a Samaritan would aid uh, a Jew. And similarly, it was unheard of that Jews would associate with Samaritans. Uh, the Apostle John is a good example of that deep-seated division and resentment. In his Gospel, he describes how simply Jews and Samaritans do not mix. There's an incident that Luke records uh, after a Samaritan village has rejected Jesus, how John asks if maybe they might rain down fire upon it as an act of judgment. This division between Jew and Samaritan had historical roots. It was based on the division of God's people, uh, where the kingdoms divided, the ten kingdoms of the north and two kingdoms of the south. And so those of the south uh, looked uh, with great sneering judgment upon those of the north. The Sumerians in the north, the Samaritans, uh, were seen as heretical and schismatic. And this was no more demonstrated or demonstrated no more clearly when then when than when the Samaritans set up an alternative uh, temple and site of worship. They were seen as wayward uh, God, uh, believers in God at best. And so it would have been astounding not only that God would take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Samaritans, but also that they would then accept it. And it's a period of persecution that has to come in order to make the early Christians step out of their comfort zone and take the message of Jesus to new places. And that is exactly what we see in Acts chapter 8 and particularly in verses 9 through to 25. We're going to spend a couple of days looking at that passage, but the simple thing from this morning is to see this astonishing act uh, where God would intervene, overcoming the reluctance of human hearts uh, to take the good news of Jesus uh, to those that were seen as unlikely recipients. His human method of working it was a period of persecution and of difficulty. The same level of reluctance still exists within Christians today. So often we are unwilling to believe uh, that those that are different from ourselves, those that are unlike us, will receive the news of Jesus willingly. And just maybe it's a period of difficulty that we're enduring as a church now, not persecution, 
just simply the difficulty of not being able to meet uh, together in our comfortable and familiar territory of church buildings. Just maybe uh, that period of difficulty is God's method of forcing us to think differently about how we might take the good news of Jesus to those that we wouldn't normally find willing and open to coming to church. Let's pray that we might be open to how the Spirit guides us to new ways and new methods and new people that we might reach uh, through his mission of bringing Jesus to the ends of all the earth. Let me pray for us. Loving Heavenly Father, uh, we pray that you would forgive us for when we would rather uh, maintain your mission upon home territory. Help us uh, to understand that your heart uh, and your love is for all people in all places at all times and inspire us to see how heading into the future we might engage in new and creative ways to bring the message and the good news of Jesus to those that would respond willingly. For we ask this in his precious name. Amen.